Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Scottsburg uh, Common Council, City Council meeting. This is March the 28th, 2022, in the year of our Lord. We will call our meeting to order. It's right at 630. So first thing we do is have prayer and pledge of allegiance. So if you we might stand, I'll have prayer. And we'll say the pledge of allegiance. <clears throat> Father, we come before you thanking you for this day, this 28th day of of March 2022. Father, it's been in your hands, and we thank you for the goodness that you've given today, the protection, uh, the provision. And Father, we just come before you for your provision this evening, Father. Uh, giving wisdom, giving discernment, Father, uh, to those who have been elected here, Father, that we represent our people, service to the people, Father. So keep us in yourself. So we praise you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next thing on our agenda is the roll call for this evening by our clerk treasurer, Jan Harvey. Ms. Albertson? Here. Bill Hopeland? Here. Rick Vance? Here. Christian Evans? Here. Chuck Rose? Here. Okay, the next thing we have is the approval of the minutes for the uh, March 14th meeting. The council's had a time to look over that. I'll make the motion. Okay, Rick Vance makes the motion to accept the minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Chuck Rose seconds. Any questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, we'll never say aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. The next thing we have is a public comment period by the Scottsford City Council will accept public comments. Individuals wishing to address the council will be asked to come forward and state their name for the record. Each person will have five minutes to voice their opinion. Remarks should focus on issues and not be used to target city employees or elected officials. Is there anyone here that would like to come forward tonight for public comment? Going once, going twice, going thrice. It's closed. The next thing we have is the public hearing for the legal notice of adoption of preliminary tax abatement resolution in public hearing. So we're going to open this up. Is there anyone here who would like to come forward and talk about the tax abatement resolution that's before us tonight on public hearing? None. I don't see anything. So, uh, Here's Kevin, we can ask Kevin. Kevin, do you have anything you want to say about the legal no notice of adoption of preliminary tax abatement resolution in public hearing? Okay, Kevin does have anything? I don't see anybody else here having anything, so we'll close the meeting. Deem it closed. Uh, so let's go right down to resolution 2022-R-2, a preliminary declaration, declaration declaratory resolution that designating an economic revitalization area and approving a tax abatement for the John Edgerton property located on Highway 31 and the corner of 31 and uh, Lover's Lane. Lover's Lane. Or Lake Road, right? Yeah. I think they're on Lake Road side. Technically it's Lake Road, right? Okay. So. so council previously at their February 14th meeting approved the preliminary so tonight would be the opportunity to rescind, modify, or issue a confirmatory resolution. So we're going to leave that to council. What, are, what is your what is your wish, Mr. Craig? Well, I'll, I'll make a motion to confirm. I, you know, I think we've done this in the past. I, unless there's some questions that the council has that's changed since February 14th. Is there any, before I make that motion, is there anybody that has a question? All right, then I'll make the motion. Is there a second to that motion? No, man makes a motion. I'll second. There's up to seconds. Okay, now, are there questions, concerns that you want to address anything about this motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign? Yes. Thank you, it's passed. Okay, I've got a confirmatory resolution. 
I don't know if you print them all. I'll email to you then. I'll get it to you for reference. Okay. Okay. And then I'll get. I've got John's statement of benefits. I'll get that highlighted where you guys sign that, so we can send it all to the county together. Okay. I I know between A and B you don't have anything, but I asked Miss Stacy, who lives over in Madison, Indiana, if she wouldn't mind to comment on the build out that we talked about there that she might be able to answer questions or you might be able to ask questions for her. Uh, this is Miss Stacy Skinner. Would you mind just to give us a report? Because uh, I was going about how we had built out two areas down and then, then the question came up, why are we not trying to sell those areas? So maybe you can yeah. better explain it. So we are selling. So <laughs> yeah, um, we have 72 customers as of Friday um, that are residential fiber customers. Um, all of them but two are in the old electric, which was the first area of build out. Um, the north sub, which is the area that is north of Lake Iola, um, and then primarily east of 31, and it does kick over a little bit on the west side right around Bulls, um, Cork and Bottle, and that area. Um, in the, the formatting of build out, we have built out, we can't book up every customer right now in that north subsection, um, but we do have areas where we have been able to hook up those two customers. So far we have others scheduled. That is York Road, portions of Beechwood, and Northfield. Um, reason that that area is able to be able to hook up is because everything's prepped. It's been built out, it's been spliced in, it's at the cabinet, it has a light, which is what the fiber is. Um, the next section that will be ready is Lakeview Drive, but west of 31, that road right there by Bulls Cork and Bottle, that's the next road. Um, we did have to set utility poles to be able to run the fiber line on that. Four have been set, three are pending because lo we've got locates called in and everything. The issue is, is the trunk line's built on it. We have the cabinet spliced, and I know I'm using all these mm -hmm. words <laughs> to, to, to describe it, but there actually are splices on the poles. So if you think of it as an electric utility, that's the transformer up there, and then the lines come off of it, that's not put up on every section in that north area. So when we are strategically picking areas in the north sub area that can be hooked up, we're picking the ones that are done spliced. So you don't want to hook somebody up on one end of a road and then turn their internet off, you know, eight times because you're splicing other customers in. So build that wise, the sections are built out so we can splice in the cabinet, but then we're picking the streets. And I will tell you, gosh, we've been doing residential fiber, trying to get it up and going for a while. We did the little disclaimer thing, you know, fiber coming soon and it's, it's wore off on its newness on the bills. So what we've done is we have door hangers. So the guys are out there splicing, they put the door hangers on. We got calls as soon as they were putting them up there. So that is good that we're able to market as we're doing a street so that, and they're closer together, which makes it more time effective for our install um, areas. Everybody's been great to work with because a lot of times we can do a lot of the prep work as long as the customer's fine with us uh, putting the drop cable directly, just spooling it at the house. Um, then we can schedule the appointment time for them to actually be home. Um, so people working and things like that aren't having to wait for that whole process. So good news is we already have fiber customers. Um, the marketing for the old electric area, we've called on that wait list. People um, converted them over. But I think it was the newness of calling and not knowing that that all needs reapproached. Um, the north subsection has a whole different area where we're doing the door hangers. But of course, with the meeting and everything in your area, if you're, you know people, definitely have them call me because you know that's going to be on the list and I will call them as soon as I get on that road. Um, may, you know, call people already that are existing wireless customers and they just talk it over, but it's an issue of it's not broke. Why schedule an appointment time? But, you know, following back up with them and they'll end up scheduling and, and finding time to do that. But it's gone over well and they're making progress 
every day or you know some of the stuff is kind of lengthy like setting the poles it takes time to get that that street ready so of the 72 uh -huh. customers uh -huh. or how many of those are new customers that weren't with the city did, did, did we I would, new people yeah they're new people uh, but I would have I would have to give you more information to break it down between new and converted, but I have that on my report, so I can get that for you. That, that is not that I think we were talking about. Isn't that, isn't that right, Council? Yeah, I, I appreciate Stacy clarifying that. Mm -hmm. The discussion that we had at the public workshop, the mayor, I think you had indicated from your understanding, the build out was building out the fiber throughout the city, and then we would begin hooking customers on once it's been built out. That was the concern, I think, unanimously of the council mm -hmm. was that we weren't selling currently, and it was being weighted to be the infrastructure all the way throughout the city. I think that was a concern of the public workshop, and then Stacy and I talked today to find out that we were as we were moving towards this build out of the infrastructure. And that's the phrase that's been lost in the shuffle here. Build out is it means different things to different folks. So. Um, the 72 that Stacy had mentioned to me today, and obviously she was kind enough to show me the map, uh, which I was able to look at where that's at currently. So um, that was beneficial, but also, you know, obviously knowing who those customers are and, mm -hmm. um, you know, where they're coming from. So. Especially if we're looking at a competition kind of, yeah. where we've talked about that, you know, fiber is a competitive field. Yeah, it What's is. What's the demand in our area? And if we're picking up customers, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's a good sign. I, I will tell you this did, Kind of sparked more conversation just knowing that there were some questions and i did speak with the mayor um, to kind of brief him on the project as a whole an update the thursday before your meetings and so that i would be able to provide you know kind of a mini project up report update it doesn't have to be discussed at the meeting but then that would give enough time for you to to have that part of your uh, agenda packets and at least stay up to date on where we are what's going on what's going on in your district for your um who you're representing and yep. things like that so i think that'll be beneficial for everybody and then if you have questions on it obviously feel free to ask me but i think that'll keep everybody more informed especially with it evolving and changing and if it, there's gonna be hiccups or there's gonna be you know things with equipment delays or something like that you'd be able to know that you know timely and kind of know where things are i think that would be a great service we can kind of keep you guys posted. Also, if you have names of people that we need to contact, we already have a kind of a waiting list for something. If you have somebody that you know of that is, is very anxious, please let us know that. Give it to me, and I'll give it to Stacy, or give it to Stacy yourself, and we can get a hold of them and give them some type of an idea as to when. Because that's what I don't guess I totally understood. If we've got to pick up Susie Q down here, but yet we've got to have to shut all these other people off. Mm -hmm. Keep shutting for all six, seven, eight times so we're actually hooking everything up, mm -hmm. you know, behind me. So, so I thought better to have Stacy here so she can explain it much better than I. What other questions do you have? If it's okay, after um, tonight's, e um, I just wanted to wait before I send an email, but I'll include that map that just shows the area, um, and then I'll give you those roads um, and of course, a lot of you may know the people. You want to come up to my office and punch it, give me some names. I know so-and-so lives here and here and here. It helps me a ton, but um, sometimes people won't call to get on the wait list. You just heard about it or you know they may be interested. But at least those roads, you know, you can send that my way and I, can, I don't care to reach out to them and you know, get them the information. What's the, what's the maximum speed that system Right, got? Right now, um, for the residential, is 500 meg. Upload, download um, is our fiber unlimited plan. Okay. We can go higher than that, okay? We can um, with everything that we have on the system. Um, we just upgraded to three gig for our backhaul, um, and then we're wanting to get to a gig, but uh, want to make sure that everything's stable with everything. And with a lot of changes and stuff, we don't want to exponentially move everything up and then put ourselves in a bind. We want to make sure that we're planning for it. And we're, um, Kevin's been doing good, getting ready to have everything on a 10 gig room so we have expansion um, for the bandwidth, which is great so that we're not waiting until we, we need that. We'll have it in place. Any other questions from 
Ms. Stacy. Thank you so much no for problem. joining us here this evening and enjoy your family. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, the next thing we have on our, our agenda for this evening is Ordinance 2022-4, an ordinance amending the zoning maps of the Unify, uh, Unified Zoning Ordinance now in effect for the City of Scottsdale.
department that oh, they, yeah. were, they were wanting to get this started pretty quickly. Yes. So they're, I, I don't see any reason and not to move forward. Well, I, I didn't know. I, I'm assuming you were okay legally. Absolutely. So uh, I'll make the motion that we suspend the rules and have safe or reading the title. Chair Rose makes a motion to suspend rules. Is there a second to that? I'll second. Any seconds? Any questions, comments, concerns? If none, I'll never say aye. 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 Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Now we have a motion to go forward with second and third reading. <laughs> Motion to approve on second, third reading by yes. General. Christian Evans makes a motion to approve on second, third reading. Title only. Is there a second to that? No second. Check for a second. So any questions, comments, before voting? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, the last thing we have is Ordinance 2022 5, an ordinance to create non reverting funds within the city. Discuss for good count. That's going to go to our clerk trainer. This what this would do. We I know the mayor in fact sometime last year read that we this the tree committee uh, had received an eighteen thousand dollar federal grant and we just need to set up a fund to track this because we'll be the conduit for the eighteen thousand. We will have some match that uh, a minimal match because I think a lot of ours what the city will provide will be an in-kind where it's going to be manpower. So we just need this set up, and especially after hearing that they thought they might have a little money left to carry over into next year. Um, we, we met with Melvina Craig, who's very passionate about this, so and she seems to have a good handle on it. So that is why we have a need for this fund. Is there questions about this? You know, uh, I will ask for a motion before we then pass ordinance 2022 5. Ordinance to create a non reverting fund. I'll make that motion. Chris Thomas makes a motion. Is there a second? A second. Christian Evans seconds. Questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those right. like sign? You pass your hands. Concerns going forward on the second third reading or not? Make that motion to suspend the rules and pass on second third reading. Christian Evans makes a motion to suspend the rules. Is there a second to that? No, sorry. Jeff Rose makes makes a second. Any questions, comments, concerns? Are you done? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign? Yes. Okay. Is there now a motion then to pass this ordinance 2022 5 on second third reading? I'll make the motion. Bill Hogan makes a motion. Is there a second? I'll say. Chris Alpers in seconds. Chris comments, concerns? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign? Unanimous. Everybody voted, right? Mm hmm. Good deal. All right. Okay, what else do we have? Mr. President? Don't have any. Okay. Here I, I noticed on the, uh, in the packet there was a notice offering personal property. Personal property, city property for public sale. That's the water jet printer out of the sign park. I, 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 I didn't even notice it until we got here, but I, I guess I have a question. Probably be more for Jan than anyone, but presumably this was purchased with grant money, you know, training money, and that kind of thing back when the when the park was was first funded. So what will happen if this if this water jet got is sold? When it sells, we usually, it usually, we it follows where the money came from, which would be out of TIF funding because it would have been for that grant. Well, would it not? I, I don't know. Just, it was, uh, it just was, piece, I, I don't know. It was that one we got under the grant, wasn't it? The, the barrel ray is what we're being told. It was the big piece of equipment that came through that. So that was, I, I was just curious whether it was bought. Grant funds or tip funds? I mean, there was a lot of grant money spent out there at that time. Yeah, it was grant money, I thought. I, I guess I, you know, I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, I, I know we don't we don't have a budget out there, and I just wondered if that if that money went back into a fund. You know, I think that's what we talked about was yeah. doing a resolution 
is that we just uh, we had one bid and that was accepted by Board of Works tonight for twenty five thousand. Um, doing a resolution at the next council meeting to create where to put it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. fine. I'm, that's I'm glad you make a lot of money. Okay. I was just curious. Because I mean, that there may be other things that we sell in the future. That so might be a Jill Sayas or because of the grant. She yeah, and you know what? Yeah, any history on that that anyone wants to get? Because so I, I so don't, we would know more than not. Okay. Be, I, I would say it would be very difficult to go back and, and find where specific money came from. I mean, you know, thinking back to when all that took place, there was a lot of there were there were tip dollars out there. There were you know a lot of a lot of grant dollars. I'm just curious. Sounds like we're going to have further discussion. So I'll just. It's a good question because that way, if we get the resolution, that will definitely tell us where to receive it. And I think that gives us adequate protection with the board of council. Right. That gives us a paper trail. And, and that's kind of where I was yep. going with that, John. Absolutely. So if Terry I'm said the, uh, there that. was a uh, bid accepted, how much was that? $25,000. Is that right? That, that piece of equipment was made, I think, down in Jeffersonville, and uh, we had one of the people that was a technician who came up and looked at it and all the $10,000. And we got online and Google it, we saw these were, these pieces were selling anywhere from $10,000 to $50,000. The $50,000 had been refurbished, repainted, but looked good and new. So uh, this man did $25,000. Well, that's good. I mean, the, the cutter <coughs> was still operational. I mean, it was, it was still operational. They came up, I mean, he knew right what he was doing, and, and uh, you know, had a couple of people look at that. Good deal. It's a good so, I thought we'd have more than one bid, but all we had was just one bid. So, uh, so anyway, that's that's going to free up some space there in the Mid American Science Park as well. So, um, what else does Council have to see? Anything? Uh, we want you to know, Jim and I was at a meeting today with the, uh, with the engineer as well as the construction company, Bowen, out at our wastewater treatment plant. And, and we meet here well, basically the last Monday of every month. And we want you to know that basically here in, in May, they're going to start filling those reactors. We have three reactors that basically holds 2 million cylinder starting with water first, we'll take a little slow, but we should be online by about the middle of June. And uh, not everything's going to be going, that whole transition by August, by the middle of August, we're, we're repurposing our, all of our own stuff that's already paid for. So uh, those, those rectangular reactors we have now, they're being reused. One of us going to have a lid on top of it. We're going to be using one of those tanks and the other tank as a backup. We've had to extend the UV building. So we're going to have a big open house for everybody. And, uh, you know, here's another thing. There's going to be a bronze plaque put out there on the building right below or above the current plaque that's out there. And on there, it does list uh, the city council uh, members on there. So please give us what name you would like to have on that plaque. Because that plaque is still there from 30 years ago. And it's going to be here for another 30 years. Maybe long after all of us. Good little Chuck Rose, you know. But, uh, you know, so it's going to be there for a long time. So make sure you have the right name, if you wouldn't mind, and give those to Jess or Jill, whatever name you want put on that plaque on the sides. So, but it's, it's, a, it's an amazing, we're going to have a big open house. I mean, to me, this is $13 million. So it's taken to build that plant. So we want to have a big open house for people to come out and see. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, I would love you guys to see if you got time. Uh, give me a call. We'll meet you out there. We'll meet you a hard hat and a reflector vest and let you go up on top and look down. I mean, what we have now looks like a, like a toy compared to what these things are. It's just amazing. And uh, so it's been a great thing for the city. So anyway, please let us know if you want to see it before the open house. And uh, anything else? Chief, you got anything for us? You guys did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Chief.
team, you, you guys do a great job. Go home. <laughs> Anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll accept the motion to adjourn. Make the motion. Sure. Thanks for the motion. We're adjourned. We can